We continue our series on shortest paths algorithms with the Bellman forward algorithm and an algorithm for finding shortest paths in directed acyclic graphs. And we're headed back to Lysiansky for another day and today we're going to see a lot of really nice corals. The Bellman forward algorithm is very simple conceptually. It takes a brute force strategy it relaxes all the edges systematically enough times that by the path relaxation property we can be sure we're done. So if we see here for one, i equal 1 to g b minus 1 this means do it as many times as the longest possible path in the graph because the longest path you can have would be v minus 1 edges. Relax each edge in the graph. So if each edge in the graph is relaxed b minus 1 times, then no matter what order you did it in, you must have hit all the edges in the sequence of the, of which they occur on the shortest path for every possible shortest path. But the other thing it does is it allows negative weight edges, and then it's going to tell us whether there are negative weight cycles. It will return false if there are no, if uh, there are negative weight cycles, meaning false, meaning no, we can't solve this problem and it will return true if this has no negative weight cycles. True meaning yes we can find the shortest paths in this graph. So that's what this bit of code down here does. And the reasoning here is that if all the weights are positive this upper loop here will have found all the shortest paths by the path relaxation property. But if there's a negative weight cycle in there remember that with a negative weight cycle if you keep going around it you can, you can keep um, getting more and more negative each time around it because um, every time around it you, you're, you're adding a negative number to the, the paths in that cycle. So if after you should have been done you do another pass of relaxation if there's any change, this is very similar to in relax here, you know, if, if the new way of getting to U via, uh, getting to V via U, V costs less than update it so if you can do that one more time after you should not have been able to, that means there must be a negative weight uh, cycle that allows you to keep on going and keep on subtracting more and more so you should return false. And we'll prove that more rigorously after we do an example. Um, but let's look at the complexity now. Relax of course is uh, theta of 1 and uh, here we have a for loop that's theta of v uh, because it strictly goes from 1 to v minus 1 and then here we process all the edges inside that loop uh, so we multiply so this overall of course is theta v times e and then here we've got another for each edge constant time theta of e so the whole thing is theta of v e here's an example graph that we'll do and the first thing that happens with Bellman forward is we initialize single source which sets everybody's cost to infinite and it sets all of their predecessor pointers to nil, which I won't draw, and then it concludes by setting S's cost to zero. Now, Bellman forward the brute force approach, it's going to iterate V minus one times, so V is five, so we're going to run this for loop four times, and each time through that loop we're going to iterate over all the edges, and we're going to call relax on it. Now, what order it does the edges in is arbitrary. Probably any deterministic algorithm will do them in the same order every time, but even that is not required for this to be correct. I'm going to do it in alphabetical order of the letters on the vertices. So I have all the R edges first, and then all the S edges, and then the X and the Ys. And if we follow this procedure when we do homeworks, it makes it easier to grade too. But that is not part of the requirement of the algorithm. Okay, so let's see what happens. We first call it on R, X, and we're, we're calling relax on R is U, X is V, and we're asking whether the current estimate to V, which is infinite, is greater than the current estimate to U, or R, which is also infinite, plus 2. Of course, they're both infinite, so that is not true. In our um, arithmetic for these shortest paths algorithms, we're always going to say that adding or subtracting from infinite leaves it infinite and same for negative infinite adding or subtracting a, a constant amount from infinite leaves it negative infinite so nothing happens with that relaxation 
RY, same thing. Both are infinite, nothing happens. RZ, nothing happens. Now let's look at SR. The current estimate of R, which is going to play the role of V, V dot D, is infinite. The current estimate of S, U dot D, is 0. Plus the weight between the two is negative 1. So 0 plus negative 1 is negative 1, and that is less than infinite. So we're going to update the estimate of V, V dot D, to be that value, negative 1 which is 0 plus negative 1. And we're going to set the predecessor pointer of V, which is R, to U, which is S. So here's our predecessor. That was SR. Let's look at SZ. Similar things happens because this has an infinite estimate. So of course it's going to be set to whatever the weight is on that edge plus S's value, which is uh, 4 plus 0 and predecessor. Now let's look at XY. Infinite to infinite, no update. Y to R, infinite plus 1, it doesn't beat negative 1. Y to Z, infinite plus 5 does not beat 4. That's the end of the first iteration. I'll tick that off here. So we enter the loop again, unconditionally. This is an unconditional loop. And we start running through the edges again. So now let's look at R to X. Well, now here something has changed. R no longer has a value infinite. So we now have the question is negative 1, which is this thing here, u dot d, plus 2, which is the weight on u to v, less than the current estimate on, on v, which is infinite. So yeah, that's going to, negative 1 plus 2 is going to be 1, that's less than, so this is going to become 1. So you can see how in subsequent passes, updates from previous passes are propagated. Because now we also have a similar thing with r to y. Negative 1 plus 2 is 1, and that beats infinite. Same thing has just happened with x. r to z. Now here we have a non-infinite value. But we got the r by negative 1, and we can get here at a cost of 3. 3 plus negative 1 is 2, and that's less than 4. So we update 2's estimate to be 2. And I always forget to do the um, predecessor pointers. Let me catch up on that. Um, we had a predecessor here. We had a predecessor here, which was actually due to this arrow going the other direction, not that one. And now we've just done, and we've updated the predecessor here. It formerly was S, and now it's R because we found a cheaper way via R. So you can see, you know, the shortest path has been updated to this path rather than this path. Okay, that was R to Z. And now let's look at uh, S to R. S's value hasn't changed, that doesn't change, uh, S to Z doesn't change. X to Y, we can get to X at a cost of 1, and now we can get to Y at a cost of 1 plus negative 3, which is negative 2, so that updates again on this pass. So you can have on one pass, you can have multiple updates depending on the order in which the edges are relaxed. And oh, by the way, that changes the parent pointer. So 2's cheapest way now is a cost of negative 2 at negative 1, 2, negative 3, following these uh, predecessor pointers backwards. Okay, we got y to r now. Uh, negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. That's the same as it already has. y to z would be negative 2 plus 5, which is 3. That's not an improvement. We've just finished the second iteration. All right, we've got two more iterations to go, third iteration r to x. Negative 1 plus 2 is 1. Well, it was already its, it's, already its uh, predecessor, so we know it's not going to change. r to y. Uh, this is the one that was set on this, but then we found a better path, so we know this isn't going to work, but it's negative 1 plus 2 would be 1, but we've got a cheaper one. r to z. This was the one we went through, so it's not going to change, but the code would say is negative 1 plus 3 uh, less than 2. No, it's equal, so we don't change it. S to R doesn't change because S hasn't changed. S to Z doesn't change because Z, that hasn't changed. X to Y, 1 plus negative 3 is negative 2. That's how we got it before. Nothing changes. Y to R, negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. That doesn't change either. And then Y, Z, negative 2 plus 5, 2. That doesn't change. So that finishes the third pass. Now notice on this path, nothing changed. So it's going to do a fourth pass, but nothing will change again that will be for not 
And so one question is, how can you modify the code here to prevent the, that unnecessary path? Uh, to notice that nothing changed, and so you don't have to do that extra path. Uh, the code would be more complex, but it might be a little faster on some problems. Okay, so now we have the shortest paths, but we have a bit more code here, which uh, is not going to apply in this case, but will apply in some cases, but let's look at what it does. It asks for each edge. One more time, it tries to do the relaxation. So if after that fourth iteration, here essentially we're running a fifth iteration, it's the same thing for each edge. Uh, rather than actually calling re relax, we're doing the same test here to see whether relax would have done something. It's the same test. So essentially we're saying, gee, after as many times as we think we needed to get the shortest paths, if it gets even shorter, the only way that it's possible is a negative weight cycle, so return false. Otherwise, we'll return true. And in this case, we return true. And so our final answer, shortest paths, is this tree of um, predecessor arrows with the, um, right now, the, the weights of the vertices of each vertex is equal to the um, shortest path from S to the vertex at the end of that. So let's briefly conclude with the uh, correctness of this. I've already stated that it's based on the path relaxation property, which says that if we relax all the edges of a shortest path in order, say this is the path going from V0, V1, up to VK, even if there's re relaxation of other edges interleaved, then the estimated cost, V dot D, will be the actual cost from S. And so let's show that it happens here. Well, we've got V minus 1 relaxations uh, over all the edges here. And that's the longest possible shortest path. So the first iteration will relax the first edge in this sequence here. The second iteration will relax the second edge from, from here to here. And... Uh, so on. So when you get to the kth iteration, you've relaxed the very last edge in that sequence. Even if other relaxations happened in between these or some other ones happen after, you know that by the time you hit the kth iteration, you've got the shortest path estimate for this particular path. And this is happening simultaneously for all paths in the graph. So that you know that given all none of the paths can be longer than v minus 1, you must hit all of them. By the way, when we do that uh, performance increase where we exit out of this loop early, we've got to make sure that that doesn't screw up this proof here. And basically, if the longest path is k, then the k plus 1 iteration cannot make any paths shorter. If there are no negative weight cycles, then we know that it, it can't make them any shorter. This is also by the uh, convergence property. And so then it will be safe. But we also have to show that the true-false values are returned correctly. And this is um, based on the argument I made before, that if this loop here has given us all of the shortest paths to the vertices, then under the assumption that there are no negative weight cycles, and then if we do one more iteration and find out that the paths get even shorter, the only way that can happen is if that assumption is, is false, that there is a negative weight cycle that lets us keep decrementing more and more and more from the cost to a vertex. So this is a very informal argument. You can see a more formal argument in the text. So it can only return false if there is a negative weight cycle that lets this thing keep happening after we should have had the guarantee of getting the shortest path. So that concludes Bellman Ford. And now we're going to look at a related algorithm. But first, let's have a brief interlude for coral. Uh, Lisiansky is known for its incredible coral gardens. Uh, this is Montipora, otherwise known as rice coral, and mixed in with some other species here, possibly. And of course, these coral garden, gardens always have a guard. You're in somebody's territory, and he comes along and tries to chase you away. So let's look now at directed acyclic graphs, DAGs. DAGs have no cycles. The vertices must occur in an order consistent with a topological sort. So for example, I have a bunch of vertices here, and the, you can sort them in some order that it ends up looking like this and so on. We've seen lots of pictures like this where the sorting of the vertices respects the direction of the links. And because there are no cycles, this means we don't have to worry about negative weight cycles. 
So we can have negative weights in the graph without having to check for negative weight cycles. And also because of the topological sort, it's possible to update the vertices in just in one pass because this, we're never going to have a cycle that propagates changes around um, a loop. So our resulting algorithm is very much like Bellman Ford, except with a bunch of stuff taken out. Uh, we don't have that second check at the end for the negative weight cycles. And then the main loop, we're going to go over the edges in topologically sorted order. And we're going to check out of that vertex, check all the edges going out of it. Can we relax those edges? So it's slightly different than Bellman Ford, but operating on the same principle. So we'll check all the edges going out of this vertex. How does that update the cost of that? We'll check all the edges going out of this vertex. How does that update the cost of that, that, and that? And then uh, suppose there's another edge here. When we get to this one, maybe that one, if this was a, uh, you know, a negative weight, maybe that one got us here cheaper than this one did, and so on. But once, once we've passed through, we never have to go back because all the costs propagate forward. So essentially, I've already made the argument for correctness because we process them in topologically sorted order. Uh, we're relaxing the edges of any path in the order of appearance in the path. Uh, again, remember by the path relaxation property, if you relax the orders of any path in the order in which they appear in that path, then you must have the correct delta s uh, v distance at the end. And so that's what happens here. Each edge is relaxed in the order that they occur in the path because you're stepping through the vertices in that forward order. I will leave the complexity analysis of this algorithm to you. It's pretty easy. And we'll move on to an example. Here now is our example of DAG shortest paths. Now the first thing it does is it topologically sorts the vertices of a graph. And for this graph, I've already done that in the both the layout and I've listed here V sorted the order in which the vertices will be considered which is the order of the topological sort. We then do initialize single source. And what that does, of course, is it sets the distance to all vertices, the distance estimate, v dot d, to infinity. And then it sets the estimate of the um, start vertex to 0, which it will always remain at. And then we go through each vertex u, taken in topologically sorted order. So u will first be s. And look at each vertex v that's adjacent to u. Can we relax over that edge? So here, at first, u is s, v is t, and of course, the uh, distance estimate to s plus 2 is less than infinite. So we do an update here to 2, and we put in our predecessor pointer. s to t, same thing. 6 is less than infinite, and we put in our predecessor pointer. OK, we're done with s. Now we go to the next vertex in the topologically sorted list, t, t to x. 2 plus 7 is 9. That's not less. Nothing happens. 2 plus 4 is 6, is less than infinite. And we record the predecessor. And same thing here. 2 plus 2 is 4. And record a predecessor. And we're done with t. Now let's go to x. 6 minus 1 is less than 6, so we're going to update y. So we got 5 and a new predecessor. x also can reach uh, 4, so right now x is u, z is v. No, we don't relax because it's not less than 4. Now we go to y. y can reach z by um, this edge, which has a weight of negative 2. 5 plus negative 2 is 3. So we can get there cheaper at a cost of 3 with a new parent pointer. Now at z, of course, z has no adjacent vertices, so we're done. And this is guaranteed to give us shortest paths to all the vertices in the graph. And this actually has important applications to things like scheduling. Because uh, when we do things in time, of course, time is linear. And that leads to DAGs when you model uh, dependency relationships between things and the amount of time they take to finish. Well, that concludes our introduction to the Bellman Ford algorithm for single source shortest paths and the directed acyclic graph specialization of it. Here is Gaetano Maurizio 
an able-bodied seaman who grew up on Molokai and was actually one of the first responders at the coal bombing. A really nice guy and very competent. But he would always make me nervous when he decided when we were 10, 15 miles away from our mothership and a thousand miles from civilization, he decided to take apart the engine and start blowing out the gas tube. <laughs>